While I really like Zen Server and it's worked out really well for my virtual lab and running my production machines and having backup Zen Server, the Zen Center software is Windows only. And I prefer to run Linux and there's been some ways to port it, but I played with it, it just didn't seem to work very well. But for a lot of the operations I need to do, I'm able to use Zen Orchestra, the free version, and it works pretty well. So I figured I'd give you a quick review of Zen Orchestra. Now, I said I'm using the free version because the free version works quite well, but it was missing some of the features such as uh, remote assistance, auto patching, rolling snapshots, and easy import export through the web interface. But you can leave Zen Orchestra connected at the same time as the Zen Center, and it makes it easy to manage through a nice web interface. They do have tiered pricing, so it starts at $70, goes up to $200, $500, and these are monthly prices, so it's a little pricey, but if you're managing a server farm and you want a nice web interface to manage them all the way across, it seems like a pretty good piece of software for that. It is really easy to install, so we'll start here at the top. They have a complete automatic deploy script that you can run and it'll automatically set this up and install it as a virtual machine. It puts in two vCPUs, two gigs of RAM, 15 gigs of, of disk space. So it's really lightweight running and you only have to have it running on one server to connect all the servers. So they have their couple different deployments. Setting it up, I'm, I didn't bother going through the setup here as a fresh one. It's really straightforward. Username XOA, password XOA makes you change the password. It defaults to DHCP, but if you type in XOA network static, it'll just ask you the IP address and you can set that up. Really, there's not much to it. I didn't find any difficulty or gotchas or challenges in doing it. Once we log into Zen server, this is the view we're presented with. So I'm logged into the Zen server. And when you hit home, it just defaults to the VMs running. Then you have some filters and I have some filters I saved like tags for production servers, non-running VMs. And if you want to save a new tag, you just go here to save it. I don't know how to delete a tag. I actually haven't had to do that yet. Um, other things you can do is when you go here and click on a server, you can click on the tag and it filters back up here. So this supports being able to filter out if you have a lot of virtual machines or a lot of servers quickly getting in and out and moving around them. Now I will jump real quick here. It lets you view the templates, the hosts, pools, and storage. And I kind of like the quick mouse over. It's very fast, very snappy. Even I have this running at home on a lesser server than my Dell and it's it's actually not bad at all. Uh, it's very snappy even on that. It is a pretty low uh, processing power. So it's gonna be well put together. And I like these little quick mouse popovers so you can see you know, how much drive space is being used. And once again, more filtering, more tags if you wanted to create this. From a management standpoint, if you scaled up and managed an entire server farm, it makes it very fast to do that. Now it also just supports freeform typing. So I typed in FreeNAS and it narrowed it very quickly down to storage nodes that had the word FreeNAS in there. So it's easy to go around here. If you had a list of servers in here, you could filter them out as well. The only thing is maybe not as intuitive is when you want to rename something. So by clicking on it, it goes here. But if you wanted to rename it, it goes in. But if you want it to actually change something, you do this long press. Click to edit the description here, but let's go back over to the hosts. Now let's say I want to edit this. You long press on it in order to do that. So the only thing that maybe wasn't intuitive about it was you, it will let you rename servers and rename things in here, but you just have to do long presses to do this. And this is throughout the, the way this works. So if I click on this, it goes into it. But if I long press on it, I can change the name of a VM. And like I said, this goes out throughout the whole system. So if you want to change the description here, long press versus just clicking it takes you into either the VM or whichever view that you're on. Let's get back to the VMs because that's where you're probably the most interested. So we can stop a VM. We can jump right to the console. And the console's nice. It works really well. So here's their dev VPN client one that I have running. And let's go ahead and type and log into it. Now, if you Notice that we do have some real-time statistics here, so we see what it's doing. We can do this to hide that, show that. Now, this does not scale 
anything other than the size. So we can make it bigger or smaller, but it's not actually scaling in graphic size. It's only scale, I should say, it's only scaling the graphic size, not actually the resolution itself. So you're able to kind of move this around to whatever works more convenient for you. And you can see it's a really fast, I'm on the same local network, of course, so it's really fast. The updates, the screen updates, uh, not just for text, but uh, we'll go over here, VMs, let's go over to a Windows server. And it's fast even with a full graphic environment like this. So that's really not a problem. Uh, when you're running remotely, this does get, of course, a lot slower. Uh, if I'm on a lower bandwidth connection, I'm outside the office VPN in, and it's not a real fast connection that I'm on. This does go a little bit slower, but I don't generally have to get console access to things, mostly because we have Linux machines. I'm just SSHing into things. But from here, I can stop, reboot take a snapshot or export the VMs. Now, some of the features show up here, but they don't all work. So you may see all these options over here, like backups, and you're like, let's do a new backup. Nope, upgrade needed. Everything just is, it not, nothing's grayed out. It just does this. It brings you to the trial for anything you try to do. So if you go to the dashboard, visualizations, statistics, these are all premium features. So they're just simply, everything goes to upgrade needed. So there's not much in here to use outside of this. Now you can go in here and we'll show you how you add servers because that's really easy to do. So here's the servers and you can, let's, well, I'll just go ahead and delete one. This is not really a big deal. I'll copy the IP address. So right here's the Zen backup server. We just delete it and it's gone. If I want to put it back, type the IP address, root, type the password. Oops, I know I typed that wrong. Hit connect. Now, the only thing is it's actually going to fail because you have to select unauthorized certificates and then we just hit connect it again. And if I want to disconnect it, it's disconnected. Like I said, the web interface is really snappy, really fast. Now, you can create multiple users in here. You can create some groups. But as far as all the controls and permission, once again, it goes back into being premium features on here. So back to the VMs. And we'll make sure we go back to show all of them. And I'll show you just how, so here's one here. And let's just start the VM. So as you start it, you get some real-time graphs. We can look at the console. We can watch the machine booting. And it's logged in. Now we can also go here and stop the VM. Are you sure you want to stop it? Yep. And we'll just go ahead and stop it. You can see the disk, you can add a new disk, attach a disk, change the boot order, snapshot. The logs, it logs the different things that were done to this VM. So when it was started, what was, you know, uh, shut down, start up, shut down, start up. Pretty basic stuff, but you get the idea that it works really well for that. So there's no snapshots for this and we'll show you once this fails. Ah, I already know it's failing because E0 does that it actually does not have the force shut down option in here so i thought that's kind of annoying but not a big deal it's just you know one thing not missing but if we wanted to create a snapshot i think it'll let a snapshot deep on doing this new snapshot now this is a little strange if you create a new snapshot you may notice i didn't get a chance to name it it just creates it so here's the new snapshot created and the same thing again we do the long press and then we can name this snapshot. Just some snapshot. And long press here if you wanted to add a description. We can revert. We can export this snapshot. It will let you export virtual machines. That part works fine. It just doesn't let you import them without doing the paid version. But we can do that. Or if we want, we can delete the snapshot and make it go away. So it's, like I said, it's pretty basic. It gets the job done and it, it's easy for me to see what's running or if I do have to just quickly snapshot a virtual machine, which we do even on our production machines, we'll kind of create a snapshot before we do some type of upgrade. I don't have to log into Windows. It works really well for that. The premium version would add a lot of nice features and it would be nice, but overall, I'm pretty happy with just the basic version to get things done. You can 
easily get in here. It's fast. It's like I said, really easy to use. Go to none. One more thing I will show you that it does really fast as well. Now, it's weird to me that a premium feature is to actually create a copy of a VM, but not premium feature is a fast clone of it. So if we have this uh, copy of DB9 Basic, we'll just do another fast clone of it. VMs, and you gotta send it to non running. Copy, copy of DB and Basic, or I'm sorry, copy of DB and Basic, and there's the clone. There's the clone we just made. So you can, you know, easily create these without going too far, without having to jump out of here. It's just weird, and it's a premium feature to actually copy, but they allow you to make a in place copy, which is the referred to as a fast copy in Zen, which means base it off of kind of like a snapshot fork, is what that one is there. So there's the extra new one, and then we can go in here, and if we don't want this virtual machine, we can destroy this one as well. So we go here to under advanced, and we can just go remove and make it go away. Yep. And yes, there's confirmation, so uh, you can feel safe that it's going to ask you at least once before you accidentally click on something. <laughs> Now, everything goes as a task in the background. So it, the web interface works nice and fast, but sometimes when you're doing these copies, if it's more burdensome to the system, it'll go in a task in the background. You can move off the screen or just close the web browser and everything continues working. So while Zen Orchestra, the free version I covered here is pretty basic, it really does get the job done and it's easy to use. I found it really intuitive being able just to, you know, start, stop or console into a VM just like that, jump right in it makes things you know pretty easy for not having to log into each time the uh, whole management interface and if you're on a low bandwidth connection makes that easy to do as well just you know go in here and view everything via a web interface and be able to see what's going on you don't get any type of historical stats you only get to see real-time stats but if you're troubleshooting sometimes that's all you need open a web interface going why is the hard drive peaked out why is the processor peaked or why is it you know doing something basic like that the you know the basic troubleshooting stuff can easily be figured out right through the client here and uh, not too much effort has to go into it but that's it for zen orchestra i just want to get a quick overview for it i don't think it needs unless i bought the full version i wouldn't do a full in-depth review but a lot of people just want to use it to basically you know view the vm see what's up and running and see what's going on with it all right if you like to count in here like and subscribe uh if you have more questions or if you really think I should do it more in-depth on Zen Orchestra, let me know. Thanks.